the use of a back pressure valve can help you maintain pump action and prevent you from unloading a bunch of fluid out of the tubing. When, when you put a bunch of gas into the tubing, you, you have the, the possibility of that gas lifting fluid out of the tubing, lightening the, the uh, differential pressure across the plunger. In other words, you don't have enough load on your traveling valve, and so you'll lose pump action. And so in a well where you're using a specialty pump to pass gas through into the tubing, or you've got a very high bottom hole pressure well that's flowing up the backside at the same time that you're, that you're pumping it, um, you know, the increase in pressure basically forces your traveling valve to close. Um, obviously, the surfing tubing pressure would be higher than if no back pressure regulating valve was present. And, uh, you know, uh, just some, some basic observations are that, well, if you, if you increase the tubing pressure, you're going to increase the pressure at the, at the pump discharge also, which is going to increase the load on the pump. That's going to probably require additional horsepower to do the work. And uh, that may mean that if you use back pressure that you're going to increase your operating cost. The back pressure valve that, that we chose to use during this testing was a HF back pressure valve. Um, a lot of you are also probably familiar with the Baird type valve. And the reason that, the reason that we chose the HF valve is, is because of the design, you know, you, you, uh, in this, in this design, you, you've just got this orifice basically to pass through and you've got the spring holding the needle into the orifice. And so you set the spring pressure and then the flow has to push the needle off to flow through. Um, with the Baird, with the Baird type, um, you have to flow through the spring and we felt like that that could cause some other issues and, and may cause problem with the data. So. Uh, we chose this this back pressure valve design to to use. Here's a look at some of the low low speed pressure data that we recorded during that initial testing, and it was one 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 reading every two seconds. And you can see, like I was talking about earlier, that that uh, it was it was difficult. The, the more that we increased the pressure, here was line pressure and this was supposed to be 200 pounds, 400, 600, 800. And so you can see the, the, the variation off of what we tried to set, and as we increased the pressure, you know, the, the variation got worse. And so, you know, that was an issue that we dealt with and, and uh, made some changes the second time around. Here's a quick, quick look at the difference in the resolution between the two-second data and the high-speed data. The high speed is, is overlaid over the two second data and the high speed data is red. And so you can see that when you, if you decide, if you decide to use low pressure or uh, low resolution data when you're capturing data, you can actually lose data points. You know, most, uh, in this particular pressure setting here, we were seeing three pressure peaks per, per stroke. And if you look at the low speed data, most of them we only caught one peak. This one had two, but uh, you know, averaging averaging is not your friend sometimes. Here's a look at the effect that uh, that we saw by the application of back pressure on the surface surface cards. Is these are the surface loads, polish rod loads, and uh, you know you can see that that with with no back pressure, with no back pressure. The uh, here here's where the loads were, and as we increased the back pressure, the load range increased. So, if you look at if you look at what that really means, as we increase the back pressure, we increase the rod loading, we increase the required horsepower, we slightly we slightly. Um, in, in, in increasing that load, we slightly slow down the strokes per minute, and we and the surface efficiency in this case stayed basically the same. It, we would have expected to see that drop, but but in this particular situation, we had that particular well. We had a hundred horsepower motor that was very lightly loaded, 
And, and so again, that was another issue that that we dealt with in the in the next set of testing. The other thing that that we found was is that there's a force that acts on the polish rod that's equal to the that's equal to the tubing pressure times the area of the polish rod, and, and we're calling this a piston force. And so, what does that mean? Well, the more that you increase the the tubing pressure, the more this force is acting on the polish rod. And so it. It, what, what it actually does is, is even though your load range is increasing because you're, you're forcing the pump to apply more loads to the rods, uh, the loads that you measure at surface are ask, actually less than expected because of this piston force. And we'll talk a little, a little more about this. You know, the, the, and that, that piston force, just like I said, impacts 